Jazzy TV. Well, guess what, uh, people of faith? Guess what, my fellow members of the body of Christ? This is what I got a text this morning, Monday morning, as I'm recording this on Monday, Memorial Day. I got a text this morning from Hertz Renicar that they have recovered my Bible. Oh, I was happy. I got tears in my eyes. Uh, I was very happy about it. I'm telling you, and it was so strange. It was just like my sister Kelly said. Resurrected after three days. It died. It was lost for the first time after 33 years. 33 years! The same time of the lifespan of Jesus Christ on the earth. And then it was exactly three days. I lost it on third on uh, on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Recovered, and so I think uh, Kelly doesn't know this yet. I'm gonna have to tell her, but I think I'm gonna send her up there to re to get it and then ship it to me. Although Hertz gives me one of the options. Hertz gives me look at this light giving me a halo back here. This looks kind of ridiculous, but kind of cool. In another way, I don't quite know what to do with it. Um, Hertz gives me the option of either them shipping it or someone getting it, and I don't just don't feel good with them shipping it. Although, kudos to Hertz for their lost and found department. So thank I thank all of you for your beautiful comments you made on yesterday's video. Many of you were empathetic right along with me. Others weren't. Others just said, I go buy another Bible, which, I'm, yeah, I, I get it. I get it. I do appreciate the empathy, though. Thank you very much. Now, I'm still going to have to use the Debar translation for you, otherwise known as the writ, because I'm going to tell you why we are not going through the tribulation. Verse 9 of Romans 5. Hence, in much, much more, having now been justified in his blood, watch this, having now been justified in his blood, we will be saved away from the wrath through him. This gives us a big clue as to why the wrath is coming. I'll continue on with verse 10 through 11, and then I will comment. I will tell you specifically why. It is justification in Christ's blood that delivers us from the indignation, from the wrath to come, and why the wrath would come on other people who have not received the knowledge through faith of that justification. For if while we were enemies, we were conciliated to God through the death of his son in much, much more. Having been conciliated, we shall be saved due to his life. And not only this, but we also are the boasting ones due to God. We are also boasting ones due to God. I like that. Our boast is in God. My defense of the evangel is a defense of God. It's a defense of the character of God. It's a defense of the plan of God. It's a defense of what God has done through the cross. Not only this, we are the ones boasting. We are the boasting ones due to God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now taken the conciliation. Much more, having been justified in his blood, we will be saved away from the wrath through him. The key phrase there is in his blood. Justification, that is, being made righteous. Justification means being declared to be righteous by God. And the reason we are declared righteous by God is an act of Jesus Christ. Not everyone knows this. The entire Christian world doesn't know it. And this is why they are going through the day of indignation. They will go through the day of indignation for the same reason Job went through his trials in that he was a little bit smug about his actions. Yes, he prayed to God, he did all these things, but he was just a little bit smug. Remember, he had made a pact with his eyes not to look upon a maiden. He was a little bit righteous 
in his own eyes. And this will be knocked out of a person. And it was knocked out of Job, Job through his trials. You and I, we have the blessed gift of coming to an understanding now that there's nothing in us. I talked to somebody over the weekend who is a Christian and who still has this idea that they are saved because of their belief in Jesus Christ. And so that can only lead to self-righteousness. Of course, you may deny it. You may say, I'm not self-righteous, but yes, yes, if your eternal life comes down to a decision you made, then you're righteous in your own estimation, and that will have to be knocked out of you. And I, I'm, I pointed out to this individual that you are self-righteous, and that is going to have to be knocked out of you sometime. I don't know when. I pray that it's knocked out of you now, because now is better than later, because later equals the tribulation, and the tribulation will knock it out of people. This is why it's so amazing to have the grace of God, because we are. these are gentle days. These are kind days. These are easy days in comparison to the tribulation that is coming. There's a verse somewhere in the Bible, read the whole Bible, you'll find it. When the Lord's judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. I mean, they will learn, people will learn from the judgments. We don't come into judgment because we've been already judged through Christ. Christ took our judgment. And instead of seeing that as something that depends on our validation of it, we see it as a complete and total work of Jesus Christ. That is what saves us from indignation. That's what it says. Having been justified in his blood, we will be saved away from the wrath through him. We don't have to go through the wrath. We don't need it beat out of us because it's already gone. It's already gone. Some of us have had this self-righteousness, this pride removed by trial. Others by just believing what God has said. That's the most beautiful way to get it imaginable. Well, God said, I'm justified, and he said that this is not out of you, Ephesians 2, 8, 9. In grace through faith are you saved, and this is not out of you. I mean, I just believe what God said. Oh, my God. You don't have to go through some great trial. You don't have to go through a Job-like experience. You don't have to go through the tribulation. That's as simple as, as it is. But as an example, the person I was talking to didn't, didn't believe it, does not believe it. And so this person still is self-righteous, and that will have to be removed. And I said, better to remove it now than later. Jesus said, um, he gave an example of somebody who casts themselves on the stone. Like, throw yourself at Christ, and you'll be broken. But if the stone falls on you, you will be shattered. I'm paraphrasing the verse. But the idea is that throwing oneself now, and this can only happen, of course, by the grace of God giving faith, you'll be broken. You're, you'll be broken. It hurts to realize that your salvation is truly not of yourself. It's a blow to the pride. So you'll, you'll feel broken. It's like, ah, oh, crap. I really didn't do this. And those other people that don't have faith, it's not their fault. Oh, that Christians hate to say that, that it's not their fault. They hate to say it. And it's rare, but it happens when they will say that a person whose fault it wasn't that they didn't have faith will still go to hell for eternity. Cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. That's a sicko belief. It's not their fault, but God predestined them to eternal torment. All right, that's called Calvinism. Very ugly, very weird, very strange. Calvinists are a rare breed. You don't want to be among them. But I, I told this person, and I said this with, I was happy about that I was able to say this. And it wasn't boasting, it wasn't bragging at all. I said, sir, you are self-righteous because you think that your eternal destiny depended on your validation of the sacrifice of Christ instead of the sacrifice of Christ alone without your validation. You don't believe that. You don't believe that. Therefore, you are going to be crushed by the stone. Now, me, 
by the grace of God, I, in this life, was given the faith to cast myself upon that stone and my self-righteousness was shattered, was broken. And I told this person, I, I don't have an ounce of self-righteousness in me. Not an ounce. And I can say that with intelligence and in complete truth and fact. I don't. It doesn't matter how many times by using hyperbole, I'm the world's most outspoken Bible scholar, I'm this, I'm that. It, it's all hyperbole. It's a joke because I know that nothing I have came by virtue of any nobility or any ability on my part. I know that beyond a shadow of a doubt. Like Paul says in 2 Corinthians is it, chapter 4, what do you have that you have not obtained? In other words, what do you have that has not been gifted to you by God? And the Christian would say, eternal life. That was not gifted to me by God. It was offered to me. I closed the deal. I closed the deal. Oh, good luck during the tribulation because it might take that to get you right in the head. Got to get you right in the head. Your head's not right. We're going to get you right in the head. I would rather you get right in the head now rather than later. But this is all up to God. But we are those for whom God has given the amazing gift of justification. We have been given the faith now, the faith to understand, uh, to understand that we are declared to be righteous by God. And it is through the blood of Christ. We've been justified in his blood, not by our decision, not by our cooperation, not by our good works, not by our acts, but by his blood. This is the belief that is claimed in Christianity, but that is not really believed. It's feigned faith. Their acquiescence to this, their verbal um, agreement to it is a false front. Behind it is, it's the uh, whitewashed wall. Behind it are the bones of self-righteousness. It's still there. It doesn't matter if you whitewash it or put it in a sheep's suit. It's still a ravenous wolf that you, that you, you can't hide. You just have this air against this air about you that you're better than these losers going to hell. Okay. Yeah. That's got to be, that's got to be knocked out one way or the other. So for us, we've been given the grace and the faith to understand this now. And it's that simple. Because we recognize the righteousness of God through the blood of Jesus Christ, we're saved from indignation. We don't need it. We've already seen ourselves broken. We already agree that nothing in ourselves could have done this. Isn't that a lot more relaxing? Yes, it's a blow to the pride. No, the pride doesn't like it. But it's a hell of a lot more relaxing than going through the tribulation. And you and I, because of the blood of Christ, shall be rescued out of the coming indignation. Because we don't belong here. Because Christ is already our all.